For many of us, mowing the lawn is a chore. Not so for designers at Toro, one of the world's top lawnmower manufacturers. I would watch the skies and hope for the rain. As soon as the rain came, the grass grew. I'd mow every little patch of grass I could find just for the aspect of being able to pushing a mower around. It was a great experience and one of my best childhood memories. Their lawnmower technology has come a long way in the last 40 years. When I first mowed yards back when I was a kid, I mean, it was a different world. At that time, they were basically machines to make tall grass short, and that's pretty much what they did. Back then, it was blade spinning fast, cuts grass, that's it. Nowadays, you really have something that's not only better performing in terms of the quality of your cut, but it's also safe for the average, everyday consumer to use. The Toro Super Recycler was designed to make the whole chore a lot easier. It's self-propelled and pretty much does away with the need for bagging. It's recycling capabilities. It's the Venetian-style blade with a patented cutting chamber. It's the clipping accelerator, and it's the kickers that, that truly throw the grass around many, many times. The patented kickers actually kick the grass back into the blades to be recut into tiny particles that drop into the soil and fertilize your lawn. So from a super recycler standpoint, that's really where you get the true recycling capability. And when we first introduced it, we literally had people down on the ground looking under the deck wondering what sort of magical contraption we'd come up with. And it really does work like magic. Toro started in the farming region of Minnesota back in 1914, supplying motors for the Bull Tractor Company. It worked out uh, wonderful for, for a short time. Uh, actually, uh, Bull was kind of a flash in the pan. They were number one in 1914. Two years later, uh, no one would build tractors for them because they, uh, their finances were so poor. So it was kind of a boom and bust situation. They were our sole customer, and they were suddenly gone. But Toro bounced back. In 1914, World War I broke out, and Toro sustained itself by building giant steering winches for merchant ships. When the war ended, Toro turned its efforts back to farming, producing a cultivator called the two row. This was the first piece of equipment you could cultivate more than one row at a time. So they kind of took our name Toro and then they called this the Toro two row, T-O-R-O, -O, cultivator tractor. In 1921, the company segued from the farm to lawns, thanks to the chairman of a prestigious golf course who was looking for motorized equipment to maintain the greens. Back at that time, just, just like farms, if you had any kind of acreage to mow, it was done so with horse-drawn equipment. Well, on a golf course, you can imagine, that's a very time and labor-intensive business. So consequently, that meant your members couldn't get on the course. And once they got back on the course, they quite frankly didn't care too much for the hazards the horses left behind. To solve that problem, Toro took five rotary blades, mounted them to a wooden frame, and attached that to a farm tractor and then they had ropes that they steered them with. I mean, it was really quite a contraption, but oddly enough, it worked. Then came the 1950s, when suburban America started its love affair with the lawn. Toro was there to help and hasn't looked back since. Today, we're making at about a rate of 120 a day. Um, in our peak season in lawn, we make about 800 a day, so uh, we, can, we can make a lot of walk farm wars this plant. It starts with aluminum bars. Each one weighs about 25 pounds. We load those into a furnace, which heats them up to uh, about 1,200 degrees, melting temperature. The melted aluminum is then transferred by a large ladle into a die casting machine, where a hydraulic cylinder pushes it into a mold. This forms what's called the deck. Dies are made of steel. They're very large, heavy duty, can take a lot of cycles. We make a lot of, of decks, and uh, we use those. We've made millions of decks using those dies. A robotic arm removes the freshly cast deck and lowers it into a bath to cool down. From there, it's placed in a trim press. The trim press cleans off any of the material that's extruded from the die. It cleans up the edges of the casting. The decks receive a final hand grind before being placed in a shot blast machine where they're sprayed with tiny steel pellets in preparation for painting. We put them in a shot blast machine which cleans uh, the finished aluminum casting. When they emerge from the shot blaster, their surfaces are more porous, ready to receive paint. This may be a lawnmower, but aesthetics are important too. Now it's into the paint booth to get that signature Toro Red. 
Well, Toro is really, really born around red. That's that's our main core color. That's powder paint. There's a slight electrostatic charge on the uh, the part so that the powder adheres to the part. Any overspray we collect and reuse. It's collected into booths. So once that's painted, it actually goes up through an oven and is baked, baked onto the part. The oven works about 400 degrees, 425 degrees. Over in the welding department, they build the driver for the blade. Toro's patented Venetian-style blade will be attached to this plate. The style of it is, we call it the Venetian blade because it's almost like you take a Venetian blind and you twist it, and that's the style of the Venetian blade. The airflow in the grass is ejected off the blade, really helps the whole dynamics of the cutting chamber. Now it's onto the assembly line, where the Toro engine is mounted to the deck. It's the, the power plant, it's spinning, it's spinning the blade, it's driving the transmission, it's, it's extremely important. And it's important that you have a quality engine with good user features. Now each mower receives its stickers and the kickers, which are responsible for directing freshly cut grass back toward the blade, recutting it to create a fine mulch. So instead of cutting off two inch piece of grass and having a two inch piece of grass laying on your yard, you actually have something that's much, much smaller than that and is almost naked to the invisible to the naked eye where it's in the grass and it's down into the soil. Once the blade is on, the wheels are attached and the transmission is built up. As the line advances, the pivot arms are attached. It's these arms that allow you to adjust the cutting height of your mower. Then, the patented handle is assembled, called Personal Pace Technology. It senses and adapts to the walking pace of the user. Essentially, when you're pushing the mower, you have a very slight force on the handle. And through that system and the feedback, it's controlling the speed of the wheel. So as you're walking along, you basically just grab the handle, much like a shopping cart without any effort. You're just walking along with it. It reacts. It understands how fast, how much force you're putting on it. And it really pulls the mower so that you don't even feel it's there. The handle is attached to the mower by a highly choreographed two-man team. But before they go out the door, every unit is run through a battery of tests, including the bump and roll, to ensure the wheels can withstand the banging and bashing they'll get in the field. In this test, mowers are checked for engine strength, environmental emissions, and noise levels. Once they pass all their tests, the mowers are partially bubble wrapped, their serial numbers scanned, and then they're taken off the line for boxing and shipping ready to help you tame your turf in style. You just go out, you can mow, enjoy yourself, spend an hour not really thinking about anything, and when you're done, the, the yard is pristine and beautiful and looks great in the neighborhood.